infrastructure, a computer service business here, a banking service or something, you care to tell the audience? Yes, I, um, I think, you know, everyone is interested in, you know, keeping taxes down and spending money wisely. So I think that's a given. But I think one thing that I'm not seeing out of the current administration and leadership is a strategic vision for Plainfield. Where does Plainfield want to be in five or ten years? What are the differentiators for Plainfield as opposed to the surrounding towns? And one of the things that we have on our side is, first of all, our diversity. I think this is a huge asset that the city has. I think the other thing that we have is our location, given that we're on a train line that leads to Newark and New York City. And given that New York City is the center of, you know, the financial um, <laughs> it's the financial capital of the of the United States that we really we should be working on attracting business to the city taking advantage of our location and given that we've got empty buildings we have um, we have I think huge potential to attract banks to attract um, insurance companies to attract businesses that are often they're looking to relocate their technical hubs, their server farms, sure. their support, because right now everything is, since 9-11, um, most of the banks are looking to move that type of business outside of New York City. And given that everything's online, they can have you know buildings full of all their servers, they sure. have their support people um, off-site. In fact, Citigroup, who I'm currently contracted to, has a huge campus up in Warren, and it's a busy, busy campus, and a lot there's a big demand for banks like Citigroup to have hubs out in New Jersey because that's where a lot of their people live and it actually makes sense. So one of the things I think the city can look at is you know looking at buildings and structures that are near the, the train lines where people can commute into the city, where people could easily drive into the city sure. and work here. And then what that would do then is support building business downtown, businesses that would serve then those employees that are coming to into the city to work. and. You know, that, that's something that's actually wouldn't require much for the city to do. It would be putting in the, the right infrastructure to support the, the high lines, you know, that kind of thing. Sure. And it would be marketing and, and going out to these businesses and saying, hey, we'll work with you. Because just like Muhlenberg is a, a large population of employees that, yes, that, that affect surrounding businesses, and that loss is going to be devastating sure. to those businesses if we work on bringing business like this in where it's not going to, it's not manufacturing, it's something that there's a real need, I think that would do a tremendous amount for the city. It would improve revenues. You're not adding the burden of what housing development does because the issue I have, I have no problem with building housing, but the problem is is when you bring in housing, now you have to provide services sure, to those yeah. individuals. So now you have an additional burden on the school system. So if you work towards development that's a business where people come, they work, they spend their dollars, and then they leave and go home, that's, that's actually revenues without much of a cost to sure. the city. I think, you know, from a standpoint of what I could offer to the council is my expertise in computers in that the, the city is working on putting in a million dollar infrastructure for to upgrade their IT. People need to be trained. Um, there's a lot of staff that are wonderful people, but they don't have the expertise in technology that they're, they're going to need to be trained. And we need to have a strategic vision of how to bring ramp these people up, you know, so that they can do things like people can pay their taxes online, that people can file permits, that they can track things that are going on. The city really needs to convert a lot of the data that's currently on paper into databases that are then accessible, and then you can create reports very easily. Sure. There's a lot of um, leveraging of doing that type of investment um, into technology. Um, I think related to that is then communication, that by using technology effectively, the city can more um, easily communicate with their citizens. Statistically, most people are online. There are a lot of people using email, internet, you know, there's a small portion of our population that does it. But it would be less expensive for the city to communicate with their citizens via email and internets rather than, you know, doing everything by paper. Sure. And that way people would get the information from the horse's mouth rather through other sources. Okay. We have also a Republican candidate. I don't want to put my my Hi, my name is, is Deborah, Deborah Dow. Dow. Oh, I know your name. I know. <laughs> <laughs> just in case. Just in case. Yes, and help. Deborah has voiced her opinion on many things, and uh, she seemed to be clear on what she wanted to do if she's elected into office. 
Can you tell me? Well, what I do, whether I'm elected into office or not, is to try to create greater opportunity for the common good. Sure. Uh, for instance, I do a lot of volunteer work with schools, not directly with children, but I try to provide teachers with additional scientific resources. I work sometimes with Stevens Tech, sometimes with the state climatologist, but I'm interested in nerds and mentoring <laughs> nerds the way you do a kid with the fastball. Okay. okay. Okay, so that's just a personal thing of mine because you can be homeless with no daddy, but if you got a good arm, somebody will always care for you. Sure. And I want to provide that same type of safety net for children who have other aspirations than sports. In addition to that, I'm really concerned about disaster recovery, homeland security issues as it relates to Plainfield. You know, put 9-11 aside when many of our first responders headed to New York, and if they hit New York again, many of our first responders are heading to New York, okay? But they're not going to leave us with Muhlenberg behind this time. We had a storm here a few years back where there was a tree in front of the fire department for days. Yes. For days, and when one of my friends got chainsaws, and a jeep to move it, he almost got arrested. And I think we should organize citizens like that. Mm -hmm. Now, more so than ever, if we have to give them some sort of special category. So if we have trees down on Woodland Avenue, we need people cutting those trees and clearing the way to the hospital. One of my friends who was a, hospital, who was a doctor from Wachung okay. fought to get to Plainfield and could hardly make it, had to walk the rest of the way because the roads were not open. So there's some things that I think have to be looked at in terms of we live in the shadow of New York City, and we may have special needs here that other parts of the country may not have in case of terrorism and a disaster. And I think we can't forget that playing field is affected by everything that affects Wall Street, not just the money. Okay, and uh, Bill Reed has just joined us, and we, we, we're happy to have him, and uh, I guess you can tell the audience what uh, office that you're running for. Okay, my name again is William Reed. Uh, I am the first ward councilman, and I will be running uh, for the first ward councilman seat again. And I'm pleased that I'm unopposed at this point. Okay. <laughs> so if I vote for myself, I guess I'm in. Done deal. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully we get a lot of votes. I'm working as if I am opposed sure. and trying to meet with the community to assess what is necessary from their point of view um, and to carry on the job with the colleagues on the council, the six other council members. I've been on the council. Uh, since December 5th, 2007, was appointed by the uh, City Democratic Committee. And uh, I tell everyone I'm the youngest one on the council, <laughs> not by chronological age, but sure? by time served. Okay, okay. Well, we wish you great luck and everything. Um, let me ask you, um, you work in, in the council and being in the council for since 2000, you say 2007? 2007, December. Okay, that's, okay, that's like one year. Your experience, uh, that I mean, the things that you picked up there, what do you think that, that you would do different uh, come January 2009? Well, come January 2009, I will have had at least a year's experience there and learned a lot more than I do now as it relates to the council business. Uh, I intend to continue to do the necessary research on each item that come before the council, read all of the paperwork, uh, talk to people as it relate to the issues that are there, analyze them on a independent basis, uh, as I've done throughout my uh, professional career, and then vote as required. Okay, I'm going to uh, go to, I have two guests that's not uh, at all candidates, uh, in fact they don't live in the city of Plainfield, but from an outside perspective, what do you think of what, what you heard, Harry, I, um, from the candidates? Well, I, I think uh, everyone's focused on finding uh, what the next best needs are, that is, next to come needs 
for playing field. Um, and and.